Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Kim Strobel. Showing my hands. There you go. I love it. All right. Hey, so this is a really special Three Questions with Kim Strobel because she actually has a new book out that is called Teach Happy Small Steps to Big Joy that we published with Impress. So just congratulations. Get a little, get a little air out to do this so everyone can see my hands. So Kim, uh, first of all, congratulations. We are like so pumped for this book to get out to the world. So are you, are you excited for this or what's going on? Yeah, you know, I, I've been full of anticipation, but this morning, George, when the cover was revealed, I got completely choked up and had did not expect that. Like all this emotion came and, and I've just been a trooper through this whole thing. And, you know, I've just put my head down to the grindstone and got it done. And it's been a dream I've had for 10 years and I couldn't move the needle to make it happen until the last year. And you were partly the reason for that. So thank you. <laughs> well, it's funny. I actually remember exactly where I was. I was in, uh, I can't remember. I remember like I can visualize it. It was in Florida. I was about to speak to a, a teacher group. I remember getting on call. I'm like, you got to write a book. Let's go. And, and, yeah, then, and yeah, then it was I, like, <laughs> and then, do you remember that? Do you remember that? I was, I was speaking in Orlando or no, in Atlanta, and Dwight Carter was in the audience, and Dwight texts you and says, yeah. you got to get Kim Strobel to write this book. And so yeah. you called me, and I picked up, and I'm like, hi, George. And you said, enough is enough, Strobel. Write the blank book. <laughs> uh, that sounds like me. People, people know me. Uh, I'm kind of forceful <laughs> that. But I'm, I'm, I'm so pumped. Um, so I'm going to ask you, like, three quick questions about it. So um, and by the way, anyone who's listening, it is in, and I'm, I'm using my hands. I'm making sure people see my hands. So it is in the description down below. So you can, uh, pick up the book right now. Uh, again, the title is teach happy, small steps to big joy. So this is, this doesn't count as one of the questions. It's just, but I want like, what's like a one minute synopsis of the book and, and actually like what, it, how does it connect to education? Because that's the majority of people that obviously listen to this podcast. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, George, as a former fourth grade teacher, I feel like I walked out the glass doors almost every single day with my head kind of hung down, my shoulder slumped, kind of feeling defeated. And instead of focusing on the 99 things that I did well that day, it was always the one or two things that I didn't handle well. Like maybe I entered into a power struggle with a student, or maybe I completely failed on this lesson, or I never even, you know, and I would just kind of beat myself up over it. And, and you know, this was several years ago. And I now, as I empower educators and I get up on the stage and I give these talks, I have school leaders and teachers flood to me after, and I know you see this too, mm -hmm. but the thing that's been really just like heart-wrenching the last few years is these are well-meaning, well-intentioned, yeah. totally heart-centered people who want to be in this profession, but are absolutely, completely overwhelmed and sinking and emotionally frayed because they don't they don't know how to get out of the chaos of how do I really perform and show up as the best version of myself for yeah. myself first so that I have what I need to show up for my students. And how can I do this job and also be allowed to reclaim the other parts of my life? Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how to do that. Yeah, that's, that's, and I, I know you know enough about my journey over the last few years. That, that, that's a really big thing for me too, is actually separating the two, right? Like really being purposeful about my work and, and loving it and being passionate, but then also turning it off and then, you know, being able to step away and being fine with that. And like, you know, I, I think a lot of times I remember someone saying to me like, Hey, George, like you work all the time. You got to stop smelling roses. I'm like, that's stupid. And then, and then like, as I go, oh, that's actually pretty good advice. And so you know, separating that too, like you, you should, you know, enjoy what you do, enjoy that. But also I think it is really important to, to actually, you know, connect with that. So I, I think you might've answered this a little bit, but I'm going to be way more explicit. Um, you know, like you, you obviously have a message and I think it's really, really powerful, but like, why, why do you, why did you write this book? Why do you think this is so necessary to, for, you know, people to read? And I, I, I think, you know, I know you've talked about this quite a bit, like some people are going to see maybe the title and think it's like, oh, you're just going to be like, just be positive. Like, don't, you know, like, don't let, don't sweat the small stuff kind of thing. But I, I know it's not that. So like, what, like, what was the, the intention of writing this book in the first place? Well, I, I think the thing is, George, is that you and I can get on a stage and we can inspire and empower people for 60 or 75 minutes. Or, you know, we can, we, we hear this all the time. Everybody mm. listening is like, yes, we've heard this, Kim. We know we need to get control of our life. We know that, mm. you know, we don't want to work like this forever and, and feel all of this stress. 
for me, George, it was going one step beyond that and saying, but teachers need to know how, how do they do this? How do they get off this hamster wheel of life? Because they, we, we don't know what different actions we can take. And you and I have been in the mindset field for the last several years. And, and we have studied what the action behind and the behaviors behind actually making these changes in our lives and, and what that does for us. But for me, this is a roadmap that says, okay, you want it. Okay, now it's not enough to want it. Let's let me show you the how to so right. that we can back this out and give you these tiny little, tiny little things that will move the needle in a big way in your life. And for me, I'm kind of sick of like, like I can't stand toxic positivity. And I, I'm a little worried yeah. that when people say, see, teach happy, they're going to think that I'm just touting that like show up and be the best you can be for kids. And it's not that. It's about you understanding that your happiness needs to come at the forefront of your life. And when we can teach you how to do that, that's when we start to create ease in the other parts of your life. Yeah, you know, it's funny because you, like teachers are notorious and I've been there in the sense that you will give everything to everyone else and then have nothing left. And then eventually when you have nothing left, you can't give to anybody. And so it is really important too. And I, I, I was so blessed to have really good uh, leadership administrators. I remember one time specifically is like, you need to like take some time off. Like you need, and it was almost like, you know, in my mind, it was like almost a punishment at first. But as I like took the time, I'm like, Oh my God, like if I want to take this time off, it would have been, been really, really bad. So I think, you know, I, I think this really applies to teachers definitely, but I also think that, you know, you need administrator support too. So I'm hoping like a lot of administrators, you know, pick up this book as well too, because it's like, hey, you know what? Like, you shouldn't be stressed. Uh, and so on our PD day, we're gonna offer you yoga. And it's like, how about don't stress us out? <laughs> how about yeah, I yeah. not do yoga and just not be stressed out? So, yeah. like, and, and I think it's understanding that happiness piece, George. It's understanding that this is not just, you know, okay, ignore the heart of this profession and just think about the positive things yeah. and just refocus positive. But let me tell you what. George, this, this is about reframing our brains to learn how to be more positive because when our brains are positive versus negative, neutral, or stressed, here's what happens. When our brain is at positive, it is 31% more productive, which means you're getting more done in a day's time than what you could when your brain was at stressed, negative, or neutral. It means that you're 10 times more engaged in your job and yep. you're three times more creative. And so these are the driving happiness research pieces that have been studied and vetted for the last 40 years. But the reason they're so hard is exactly like what you're saying. We, we have these downloaded social scripts mm -hmm. that tell us, you know what, if you, this is how we function and I don't know how not to function. And you just did a post on social me media recently about a, a woman, a teacher who worked for you, who didn't feel like she could give herself the grace to grieve because she needed right. to show back right. up for her job. And when I read that, what you told her, I was like screaming, this is what we're talking about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, I've, I, in the last couple of years, one of the things I've really known is how connected your physical health and your mental health, and your emotional health are like they're, you know, like they're, they are correlated. So I love that you highlight that too. So I, a lot of people are going to learn a, a ton from you in this book. Um, and, and not just like why this is so important, but you know, how you can do this, you know, and, you know as you said, kind of small steps, but what did you learn from writing the book? Like, what was something that you, you know, you're like, like, I had no idea this was, and maybe it's like, through the book writing process, like what that was like, maybe it was like stuff that, you know, maybe that you implemented the book that you, when you first wrote it, you never really thought of, of sharing, but it did. So like, what was your big takeaway from writing this? Well, well, first of all, George, I never believed in myself as a writer. Mm -hmm. And for 10 years, I've told myself I have a book inside of me. And then every other, um, you know, belief system in me screamed, but Kim, you're not a writer. You're not a prolific writer. You're not like the you know, great person at, sh you know, sharing your thoughts. And so I would write a chapter and then I would give it up for two or three years and then I'd come back to it. And so there was just like all this evidence that was backing up my belief that mm -hmm. I am not a writer. And in the last year, what I have figured out is I am a writer. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I have Impress. Right. That's why I have an editing team. Right, right. But the other thing is, is George, every single thing I'm writing about this book, it, it's stuff I'm still you don't write about it because you're the guru of it. 
you write about it because you're a practitioner mm -hmm. of this. And so there were some things like when I was writing the chapter on boundaries, you know, and understanding that we can't keep saying yes to everything and that we have to, you know, really learn to even figure out what our boundaries are and then begin to engage in them, which that triggered all kinds of stuff in me because boundary work has been something that I have struggled with my whole life, yep. you know? So yeah, I just started to see these pieces where, okay, Kim, like this is also the work that you need to keep doing in your life. Um, and so I want to make sure that people do understand that it's not that I'm the guru of happiness or that I've perfected this. I know what to do, uh, George. My brain knows what to do, but it's making myself uncomfortable enough to, to take these actions in my life so I can start to feel better in those areas of my life that are important to me. The, 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 I'm always a little resistant to experts that don't live what they, or and maybe not even going through some of the struggles that they're talking about too. Right. And I think, uh, one of the things I've really been talking about is that idea of you shouldn't be lead by example. It should be learned by example, that people need to see that you're also going through this process with them. And then, so it is, you know, it's much, it's much easier to go through that when you, when you know the person you're sharing and you know, for me, anyone who's an expert in any area is because they are adamantly excited about learning about that area. Not that they're all knowledgeable, right? They know that the more they know, the, the more they learn, the less they actually know. And they're trying to figure out as they go. So I, I love this. All right. So this book gets out to the world. People read it, you know, all over. What do you, what do you hope that it actually achieves, you know, once people get it in their hands? That is such a great question. I think for one thing, one of the things that speaks to me so much right now is I find that those of us who are in education, and, and I'm not meaning to put a label here, but I think that we're kind of wired differently in that we're mm -hmm. very high achieving. We're willing to self-sacrifice all day long for the benefit of others. And even, you know, when we go home and we're constantly fighting this inner critic inside of us, George. I mean, I'm sure you have one. I have one. Her name is Ethel. And I mean, she is vicious. She is constantly right. trying to put me in my place. And so what I really hope is that as readers read this book, they, they're they able to pick one tiny little habit that's going to, that they can implement that is going to change their life in a small little way. And then they're going to build that momentum. But I guess what I really hope, George, is at the end of the book, they take a big sigh and they go, you know what? I'm allowed to give myself some grace. Mm -hmm. I understand now that I am worthy of loving myself enough to know that I can also invest in myself because while I'm a teacher or a school leader, I'm more than that. Right. And I'm allowed to be more than that in the other parts of my life. Yeah. You know, so I, I've been writing about this quite a bit lately. Um, all this stuff with artificial intelligence, which is absolutely amazing, incredible. My big concern is the loss of humanity through that process, right? Like we're going to have artificial intelligence, write blog posts that artificial intelligence is going to read. Right. And there's no actual like human connection here. So I think that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about that is because it's really in a time where there's so much focus on digital tools. You're saying like, we need to focus on humanity and we need to focus on connecting with one, one another and honestly with ourselves. And that's something that I'm really excited about with this book. Um, you know, uh, I've, you know, I've had some struggles this year and I'm like, as you're talking about this, I'm like, oh my God, I need to read this so bad. So I'm excited to, to like really read it. And I know it's going to help me just because of all the work that you do. And the thing that I love is that, um, it is really practical, but there's so much research that you share that backs up all the stuff that you're sharing. So it's not just, you know, uh, one or the other. I think that's, that's really important. So Kim, congratulations. So I'm so excited for you. Um, everyone listening, make sure you check out the book and, uh, make sure you actually, you'll see Kim's, uh, actually, I gotta ask you this question. What's the hashtag? Do you have a hashtag already to go for this? Yes, we have a hashtag and get this George. I'm so excited. And Paige was so excited about this too, your wife. We have like, it, the hashtag is teach happy, but like, I'm trying to create like a teach happy revolution because like, I really want people to know they're allowed to be happy within the profession and outside of it. And so like, we have sweatshirts, we have t-shirts, oh, oh. all of it says teach happy, just as reminders that our happiness counts and, and that we count. And, you know, one of the things I want to reiterate real quickly, just because you brought it up, George, 
is that whole idea of relationships. I just read a study this morning and, and this guy did a study of like, what are your goals? And he right. did this to thousands of people. And it was like, they had financial goals and they had spiritual goals and they had fun goals and they had health goals. And as they pilfered through them, George, only a very small percentage of the goals had relationships in right. them. Right. So you're, you're speaking to my heart there and understanding that, you know, connections matter and, and there is this new word out there called mattering and mattering is important. It's important that we matter. It's important that our students feel seen, loved and valued, but, but, you know, we can't forget ourselves in that equation. I love it. So, Hey, if you are listening to this podcast, you get the book, get up the hashtag teach happy, make sure you tag Kim in it, share something that you learned from the book. Uh, because, you know, I think one of the things that we are really pride ourselves on is the importance of building community about this because i know this is i know about you kim is that you have a lot to share but you're also willing to learn from people that are reading your book and so share your comments to the teach happy hashtag i know kim's going to be watching it adamantly so uh, again congratulations everyone thank you so much for listening we we want to hear about the book uh, we hope you love it have a wonderful day take care